goodness, welcome to another video of your daily NCLEX dose. Today we're going to talk about kidney biopsy. So I'm going to give you a question and then we're going to break down the question, the rationale, and I'm going to give you a little bit of nursing content and nursing care. But if you, before that, if you don't know about me, my name is Mo. On the internet, I'm known as Alpha Slice. I've helped thousands of students pass their NCLEX on their very next attempt. If you stick all the way to the end, I'm gonna give you my bonus. It's an ebook, The Real NCLEX World versus NCLEX Textbooks. In this ebook, I've got screenshots of, you know, when my students go to the test center, after they get out, they send me a text message and they say, hey Mo, those are the topics that I got on my NCLEX. And what did I do? For the past 12 months, we've been collecting those messages, we took screenshots, we put them in one ebook, and I want to give you this ebook for free on a free webinar. So there's a link on the screen in the description box. You click it, register for a free webinar, and I'm going to show you the ultimate Anklex algorithm of how I help thousands of students pass their Anklex on the very next attempt. Now, without further ado, let's talk about kidney biopsy. So this is the question. So we're going to break it down. We're going to highlight keywords. Is it all? Yep. We're gonna highlight keywords and then we're gonna read the options. Those are the four options. We're gonna rephrase the question in our own words. You know, the whole NCLEX algorithm that my students follow on whatever they're for, whenever they are answering NCLEX questions. So, the patient complains of pain at his renal biopsy site 14 hours post op, right? So, post operation, which is the kidney biopsy. What happened is the patient complains of pain at his renal biopsy site. So the pain radiates to his flank and umbilical area, right? Which complication is suspected? Now, before I even read the options, what did I do? I mean, I did a little, a little bit of rephrasing. I mean, I can't help it. That's, you know, the nature of the game. But the first time you read it, we're gonna read it like general reading, just understand it. The second time we're gonna pick up keywords. So now if I read it, the patient complains of pain at his renal biopsy site 14 hours post op So pain is, is the main concern, right? That's the main signs and symptom, right? But here, the patient had a renal biopsy 14 hours post op Why 14 hours is important? After every surgery, like the 24 hour, the 24 hour, is the cutoff. You know, after surgery, you wanna highlight, did this patient had a surgery 24 hours? Or is he 24 hours prior or after? Okay, so now we highlighted that it's 24, um, I mean, before the 24 hours, it's at 14 hours. I think it's very important, especially when we're doing prioritization questions. Now, this is not a prioritization question, but of course, I have the ultimate NCLEX strategy when it comes to prioritization. You use two, two um, you know, NCLEX strategies in terms of prioritization questions, which we'll talk about it later in separate videos. So the pain radiates from his flank to his umbilical area. So, so the pain is in the flank and umbilical area, right? So that, that here in this question, they didn't say it's right or left. So the kidney biopsy, we don't know if it's right or left, which is totally fine. Which complication is suspected? Now complication is a keyword because that's what I'm looking for. What am I suspecting, right? So what complication? Now, if I close my eyes and, and I want to rephrase that question in my own words, what would I say, right? I'll say, all right, so I've got a patient and I'm big on visualization, right? So if you're solving an NCLEX question, what I want you to do, and this is how you get right answers, is you close your eyes and you visualize yourself in that setting. So if this question is in the emergency department, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna visualize the, the emergency department. Now, if this question is in a, a clinic, post-op clinic, right after surgery, so of course like this patient 14 hours post-op, he should be in a medical surgical unit. So close my eyes, visualize myself in a med surge unit, and I'm walking into a patient room and the patient says, oh my goodness, Mo, I've got, oh, nurse Mo, I've got pain in my flank umbilical area. I'm like, cool, right? So I know that it's 14 hours before the 24 hours. So 14 hours after surgery, he's having pain, and I'm like, is there any other thing? So pain, so radiating to, you know, his umbilical area. And, okay, so what complication? That's the question. What complication? All right, so I close my eyes, I visualize the patient, and the patient just had renal biopsy. I don't know if it's right or left, it doesn't matter. And then he has pain, it's in the flank, radiating to the umbilical. All right, cool. I can see the patient. I can see his expressions. All right, now I'm thinking about complications. What complications could be could possibly be happening, right? Now, what I did, I read, I read the question, I highlighted the keywords, and then I rephrased the question 
in my own words and I visualize the patient, right? Now I go ahead and read the options. Bleeding, right? Is bleeding a complication for renal biopsy, right? Like patients bleeding from the inside, maybe hematoma, or bleeding from the outside, is bleeding a complication? Well, of course it is. Come on. That's the, like the number one complication for any type of internal organ biopsy, right? Now, I'm gonna keep it. To me, it makes sense. Number one is the right answer, but I'm gonna read all other options just to, you know, uh, eliminate them. So the second option is infection. Dude, this is wrong, especially because it's less than 24 hours. The, 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 the body did not, I mean, you, you need at least 48 hours, 24 to 48 hours, but 40, 48 hours makes sense, right? So that the patient, caught something, the wound got contaminated, or whatever, and the body reacted and started forming some type of infection, right? So definitely it's that infection. Hypertension. Now, if I know that bleeding is the number one cause uh, or number one complication for renal biopsy, then if the patient is really bleeding from the inside, that means that the patient's blood pressure should drop not go up, right? So hypertension is definitely a wrong answer. And then you've got renal colic, which is, I mean, we obviously know it's, it's a renal biopsy. It's not, you know, calculus or stones in the kidneys. So definitely this is wrong. Or if I'm, let's say, if you don't know, and you're just debating between like renal colic, which is renal pain, renal colic, which renal pain from cal calculus, you know, those stones that form in, in any part of the kidney. So if you really um, don't know if it's like renal colic or bleeding. Now, this is a keyword. We're talking about a complication. Is renal colic a complication of like a stones, formation of stones, a complication of renal biopsy? Of course not. But let's say if, if, you're, if you're just, you know, like you're debating between this option and this option, just use your critical thinking, right? When you visualize yourself in that situation, what could be happening? Could, could the patient be bleeding? So if I'm gonna assess the patient, am I going to assess the patient for bleeding or I'm gonna assess the patient for pain? Well, bleeding makes more sense. That's critical thinking, right? So, boom, that's the question. The right answer is bleeding. Bleeding is the number one complication when it comes to renal biopsy. Now, let's talk a little bit about the main complications, there's four of them, when a patient is experiencing, when a patient has renal biopsy, right? Complication number one, as we said, it is bleeding, all right? Bleeding number one complication when it comes to renal biopsy. Now, how do you see bleeding? Is it just bleeding from the site? What if it's internal bleeding, right? So there might be hematoma, so you have to assess for hematoma. But the number one sign for bleeding after renal biopsy is hematuria, which is blood in your urine, all right? Now, this can go for a few days, which is normal, but if it went more than that, if you're seeing clots, if the patient has urinary retention and the patient can't void or pee pee, then um, what happens, you've gotta check their CBC, right? You've gotta check uh, their hemat hematocrit, their hemoglobin, and if they drop, then they require blood transfusion. Now, not all patients, it's, it's very rare for a patient after renal biopsy to require blood transfusion, but in case it's it's very rare, but in case you need to do top and cross matching and screening and all that type of shit. I'm not cursing on those videos, so you gotta do, you know, what you need to do for blood transfusion. Now, the number two complication is pain. Patients experience pain after renal biopsy, usually for a few hours, right? Tylenol will do it. More than that, mm, it's not very common, but then you would think of something else, all right? Then you have to do more assessment. Maybe it's hematoma under the skin or internally, and that is causing their pain. But usually it's a few hours, Tylenol will do it. Now, complication number three is atrioventricular fistula. Now, when you're doing the biopsy, you might puncture an artery and then a vein, and that will cause a fistula, which is a canal or opening between the artery and the vein. Don't worry, this happens, but it's resolved on its own. The body will heal itself and you don't have to worry about it. Now, complication number four is hematoma, right? Now, you might say, uh, hematoma is like similar to bleeding, no. Bleeding, we're talking about hematuria, usually a few days, it seizes. If it's more than that and hematocrit hemoglobin are dropping, then you need to give blood transfusion. It's very rare that you need surgery for bleeding, right? Uh, because it, it, it gets resolved. Now, hematoma is something else, which is the accumulation of blood under the skin 
and or around the kidney. And that blood will stay there. And sometimes it coagulates and sometimes it doesn't, but it stays there, right? So it forms a sac and it stays there and causes a lot of pain. Now, the hematoma, you need to drain it, like you need to surgically drain it because the hematoma will cause, will cause infection, right? So if there's hematoma, it should be surgically drained and then treated with antibiotics, sometimes prophylactic antibiotics because you know that infection is gonna happen or if it already formed an infection and you found it late, then you treat it with antibiotics. So hematomas are drained, surgically drained, and then antibiotics. So those are the four complications that you see in kidney biopsy. Now let's move into nursing care for patients with kidney biopsy. All right, amazing. Listen, nursing care. Of course, nursing care is all about assessment because you want to monitor for all those complications or potential complications, right? Now, when it comes to nursing care and assessment, mm, vital signs. That's what nurses do. So anytime you've got vital signs and options, oh my goodness, 99% of the time, that's the right answer. Of course, you gotta read the other options, but vital signs is critical. So you've gotta monitor blood pressure, heart rate, and breathing, all right? Any abnormalities, then you gotta think of, hmm, what's going on there? It could be infection, it could be bleeding, right? That's why the second assessment that you need to pay attention to is urine, because you're, uh, monitoring for hematuria, right? So you're assessing the urine, you're assessing for clots, and you're making sure that you tell the patient, we're gonna talk a little bit about patient education, but you're gonna tell the patient, hey, please keep an eye on your urine. Mm. And keep an eye in if, if the, the patient cannot actually urinate or you know urinate because then they're having urinary retention and you've got to treat that. Maybe Foley catheterization or urinary catheterization. But of course, keep that in mind. Now, the third thing that you need to pay attention to is, of course, pain and tenderness, which some people call it, this is the fifth vital sign, but pain and tenderness because you wanna assess for hematoma, right? Hematoma under the skin or, you know, around the kidney, so you feel it. Is the patient having any pain, any tenderness? Now, that's normal for the first few hours. After that, you just have to have a sound clinical judgment to assess for hematoma, right? Now, those are the three things. If you're discharging the patient home, there are a few things that you need to tell the patient to keep an eye on. Because if those happen, you gotta call your doctor, right? Number one, fever. If the patient is having 100.4 or more, then definitely you need to call your doctor because that is the first sign that the body is panicking because there's some sort of fighting going on or infection, right? Now, the second thing that you need to tell the patient to keep an eye on, of course, it's urine, right? You tell the patient bright red urine is normal for a few days, but if you're seeing clots or if you cannot piss or pee pee, then definitely you've gotta call your doctor because we've got to insert a urinary catheter. Now, the third or fourth thing that you need to tell the patient, hey, be aware, of course, it is pain at the site, the um, you know renal biopsy site. Because if the patient is experiencing pain, you've got to tell them you might be collecting blood under your skin, that's hematoma, and hematoma might cause infection, so you don't want that to happen. So if this is, if the pain keeps increasing in intensity, and it's keeping, it's keeping you uncomfortable, or you can't sleep because of the pain, and you popped a couple Tylenols, but the pain's still there, then you need to call your doctor, right? The last thing is fatigue or weakness. Of course, if the patient is fatigued or weakness, that shouldn't be the case after renal biopsy. Now, I've gotta pay attention to some other things. Maybe the patient is having bleeding, maybe he's having clots, maybe those clots are going everywhere in his body. There is something going on. So of course, that is a, a patient education that the patient needs to be aware of and they need to call the, their doctor right away. I hope you enjoyed this video and as a bonus if you attend my free webinar I'm offering this other ebook for free those are the 300 Spartan medication ebooklet that you know you know I told you when my students go to the test center after they get out they text me not only topics but they also text me the drugs that they got on the real NCLEX and we collected those drugs over the past 12 months we came up with 300 drugs so we did all the research for you we put them in families categories Categories and the name of the drug, indication, side effects, and patient teaching, that's all you need to know when it comes to drugs. If you master those 300 drugs, you are unstoppable on your ankle legs and you will pass on your very next step. Now, if you wanna attend my free webinar and learn more about what we do, 
You find the link, click it, attend a free webinar, it's gonna change your life forever. Of course, you can always text me, and when you text me, I'll get back to you, and you know, I'll onboard you, sign you up. It is amazing! Love your face, and if you like this video, share it with your friends, and I can't wait to see you on the next video. Let's go! Hey Alpha Slice family, hey Mo, I got two words for you, sir. Thank you. I mean, if I could shout it so the people in the back can hear it, I would. Thank you so much, Mo. You have changed the game. This program is a game changer. I am a two-time test taker. This was my second time around. The first time I took my exam, I took my boards uh, about four to five months after I graduated nursing school. I was an honor roll student. I did well in my classes. I didn't struggle in nursing school. I thought that I was going to blow this test out of the water. And guess what? It blew me out the water because I didn't pass my exam the first time. But I ran across your uh, video and what drew me wasn't your yellow Lamborghini, Mo. It was your enthusiasm, your energy, and your excitement to teach other people to do what you've been doing for years was what drew me. I am so grateful that you kept that same energy throughout the whole 42 episodes. Yes, that's right, 42 episodes. And I binge watched those episodes. I watched them over and over again. I took those tests. I, I paid for the extra things and I took the tests and I took them repeatedly. And what happened? was I passed my boards. I am officially an RN. After four years of nursing school, I am officially an RN. I am extremely, extremely grateful for your obedience in developing this program. It is a game changer. I know I said it, but I'm gonna say it again. It's a game changer. One of the things I loved about the program were the content, the content that I got through your program was exactly what I saw on the NCLEX. I got level one, two, and three questions, but I really got a lot of level twos and three questions, and I felt confident and competent in, in, in those questions because I felt like your program prepared me for that information, and so I sat there with confidence, and then I was obedient. I did the, the the 21 rituals. I went to the testing center before the day of my exam. I did everything that you told me to do, Mo. I followed everything down to the letter. And as a result of that, I sat down and I took my test. Here's another thing. I didn't rush through it. See, I was a speed reader. And so you taught me a tool that I will never forget. You taught me that wrong um, time is not my enemy. Wrong, wrong answers are and that's what I did the first time. I was rushing through that exam. I kept looking at that time. But this time, oh, I took five hours. Yes, five hours. But I had the endurance because I had been training. I had been, been watching. I had been studying. I had been testing, taking those questions over and over again. And I felt competent and I felt confident taking that exam. And I left out of there. And guess what? I got the good pop-up. Oh, yes, I did. I got the good pop-up. And I'm truly grateful again. I know I said thank you like 500 times more. But if I had another word to, to just be more expressive, I would. But you are amazing. This this program is a game changer. And listen, if you are considering looking at another program, don't you do it. This will change the results. This program is everything you'll need to pass your exam. I'm an RN, y'all. After all these years, I've worked hard and now I'm here. Mo, thank you. It, it's been an honor to watch your videos and learn so much from you. And listen, keep that same energy because that also changed the game. Okay, thank you so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.